Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara is at work, and today we are talking about the Custom Alien Knives MX4. It's handmade. This specific one is made out of the coffee ground deposit, or composite, I should say. There's also a hemp composite handle material. All right, one thing, I just want to put like a little disclaimer. Alien is my friend, and you know, I want nothing but success from him. And I know that when he sends me a knife to check out, he does it expecting me to be utmost honest about everything and as I would be no matter what. So, you know, and it's, you know, from a knife maker's perspective, you know, they need that. They need that, that honest feedback to, to improve or, you know, whatever. In, in their knives, you know, and when I do see something bad, as much as it pains me to, to, to call it out, you know, because I want nothing but the best or for them to do the best, you know, it's also something that, you know, I can help with by, by calling it out or showing it. So, but I love the guy. And like I said, I want nothing but the best for him. Let's get into this. It is a hollow ground EDCRV2 steel. Now we'll talk about that steel here in just one second, but first let's go over its dimensions. Overall, seven and a half inches with a three inch blade. Um, it's basically right in between the Manix or the Para 2 and the Para 3. So it's basically right in between there. It's a little bit shorter than the PM2 or the Manix and just slightly bigger than the Para 3 in length. So great EDC size. Now this is all handmade, but there are some pretty significant issues that we will get into here in just a bit. First, let's go over its sharpening and steel. So the steel, Let's go over that. Basically, what I've read is it's like a souped up 5160. It's tougher and it has better edge retention than 5160, but it's kind of similar. So it's like a souped up version of 5160. Now, the let's talk about sharpening it because I do want to show um, a couple different ways you can sharpen a, a blade um, shape like this. So here's the edge that it came with, and I'm about to sharpen it. So I'm going to start sharpening it on a Lansky stone and, and just holding the stone in one hand and kind of just doing like a swaying motion, kind of just rocking my wrist back and forth, but still holding the same angle as it drags across the stone. You know, not really rocking my wrist but uh, rolling it I guess you could say so that it holds the same angle and you can also do the same thing on the work sharp field or guide the field system whatever they call it the work sharp field system it works really well on this so this is a great system to sharpen this knife on you just want to basically do the same thing like the Lansky stone kind of rolling your wrist you can lock your elbow and lock your wrist and drag it across but there is that little bit of belly now here it is on like a flat stone which you can see it's still easy to sharpen on you know just a regular flat bench stone you, know, you do have that belly so you are going to have to turn it and then you can use your finger if you're going to do it one-handed like this you can use your finger as a guide you know maybe if you are one-handed you know, and then you can mark your finger if you want to so that you're repeating the same angle if you only have one hand. But you're going to have to do the same thing when you spin it around and put it on your thumb if you're going to mark it and use your thumb as a guide. You know, you just mark the spot where the spine of the blade hits your thumb and you know just keep putting your finger in the same exact spot now if you're not gonna you know use your finger as a guide you know and you're just gonna hold the angle yourself you can absolutely do that it's you know obviously anybody you know you can do that if that's what you prefer but this is how i sharpened it i sharpened it on uh, two diamond plates i started with a 300 grit basically did the same thing i did on the other stones just on a diamond plate and i 
for the most part did it one-handed, but I did use my other hand at times, especially in this direction when I was going back the other way because I kind of would use my thumb to kind of push the tip down towards the stone like that right there. You can kind of see me like pushing the tip, um, kind of rolling the tip towards the the stone when I get past that belly because it does have a, a you know a significant swoop up the blade. It is a unique blade shape, you know, so you do get, kind of get used to it. But this is a 600 grit edge. This is it all sharpened up. It's not my best edge, but it's very very sharp. And it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Like I said, it's not my best edge, but it looks pretty good. And the steel did sharpen up rather well. Now, it's, you know, there's a little bit, because of the finish on the blade, there's a little bit of resistance going through the paper because, you know, the finish is kind of rough feeling. It's not real smooth like a satin finish. But once you get the hang of it, you know, it's it'll go through just fine. You just kind of got to get the hang of flowing it through some paper. And the edge is extremely sharp, you know. It's just the finish of the, the steel kind of creates resistance a little bit. You know, when like it kind of snags the paper a little bit as the paper's like dragging over it. Now, the handle material, it's extremely, extremely light. And we'll go over cutting here in just a second. But the handle material is extremely light. It's not going to be a uh, neutral ergos whatsoever. You are definitely pushed into one position. And, you know, it, it's comfortable. It is comfortable. You do have this swell right here that kind of just melts right in your hand right there. You're going to want to use the choil because you can use it back here like this, I guess. But, um, and it's very comfortable like this, but you know, when you're cutting and you have a big choil like that, things tend to get caught up in it. You tend to hook and stuff like that. So I tend to rather use it like this, but you absolutely can use it like this. Or like another grip I really like is you kind of use this, um, this angle right here to use your fingers to push up right into your palm and pinch. That's also a good way to cut. And it also allows you to kind of rotate it in between cuts. Okay, cutting with it, it's not the best slicer. I mean, there are times where it just slides right through just fine. But then there's other times, you know, it kind of gets stuck in the choil a little bit. And the finish of the blade kind of creates a little bit of resistance. And it's also a unique blade shape. So with unique blade shapes, the thing with unique blade shapes is that they're kind of specialty task um, shapes, I, I guess. Now this will absolutely cut. It's not that it won't cut or slice, it's just it's not gonna be your recycling knife. It's not gonna be the knife you come out in the garage and do your breakdown of your cardboard. But as you can see, it cuts just fine. You just kinda gotta get used to the blade shape and where the material goes over the knife the best. And you know, like I said, it does cut just fine, but you know, it's it's not gonna be the best slicer, especially for thick, dense cardboard. And you know, there were times where it didn't feel extremely reliable. Now for utility cuts, it cuts great. So like this blade shape is gonna be a very utility cutting-esque shape, I guess you could say. Um, it just, it slices through because it's got a really fine tip and it's just that shape where the tip goes into materials very easily. It's easy to get a lot of leverage into the tip and you see the way I'm kind of pinching it and using my, my finger to kind of push the tip down. It works really good for utility cuts. Utility cuts are fantastic with this knife. And you see me locking it in right there even just using my wrist. Now, in the pocket, the clip does work. Um, you know, it's pretty springy. Um, there is quite a bit hanging out of your pocket. It does, uh, you know, you can put a lanyard on it. It does have the lanyard hole. Um, and like I said, it does work. It's a little rough going in and out of the pocket. It doesn't feel crazy secure, but it works. It does work just fine. Now let's go over the action really quick. So it is a back lock. You see this little springy back lock right there. So you can push that. 
spring it forward and shut it. You can reverse flick it, spring it forward, and it did get a lot more um, fidgety as time went on. And you can thumb flick it. You can also push the back lock and just kind of control it with your finger. There's, you know, many ways you can do it. You know, and you can slow roll it, obviously. It is a back lock, so it really doesn't, this one doesn't have a detent. That's the one thing. There's no detent, so you kind of have to use your leverage up into this corner and, you know, either slow roll it or you can kind of just create tension and then flick. Same thing with the reverse flick. You're going to want to kind of push your pressure straight straight up before you spring it out. Don't let it spring out. C create tension. Then when you're ready, snap it out. And dropping it, if you unlock it and you drop it, it will drop shut actually relatively easily, which, you know, isn't, uh, I guess, you know, there are some backlocks that do, do that pretty easily. So the drop is pretty good. This one is perfectly centered. And the handle material, the grippiness to it, it's pretty grippy. Um, everybody asks me if it has a smell. It might have in the beginning, but it doesn't now. I mean, it just basically smells like whatever resin, you know, my or G10, you know, basically smells similar. Um, you know, maybe in the beginning it had a little bit of a scent, but you know, over time, you know, I've sharpened it, oiled, you know, so yeah, it just smells like a knife. Um, now, the finish on the blade you know, is uh, a little rough, you know, texturing, kind of like a, like a rusty feel, but I'm not saying it's rust. I'm saying it's just like that type of feeling, which is kind of cool. I do like the, the look of it. It has a very mean looking grind and yeah, so pretty cool. And the hardware, you see it's like a, uh, you basically a flathead on this side and then Torx bits. Now let's go over some of the bad. Because we do have a couple, you know, pretty bad issues here. So one, you know, the more I flicked it and the more I used it, even though it didn't get any play side to side. And when it did, you know, it was easy. It's a T10 pivot, I think, and then T8s and then T6s down here. So the hardware is a little mixed up. It's not all the same hardware, but it did get a significant amount of play right here. And then I can also, like if I, if I really work at it, oh, there it goes, see, and I don't have to even push this. You see my hands off of it. It will uh, fail on me um, pretty easily so you know that's kind of something you got to worry about especially you know in the field when you get your knife stuck in something you're jerking back and forth trying to get it out you can accidentally hit this too which then you know if you're squeezing it like trying to pull it out it will because it's pronounced it's not like like say like say with this where it's in the inside of here so you're you're going from one scale to another with your hand not pushing into it this is pronounced so since it's pronounced you know you could lay your thumb across it and accidentally disengage it right there you can squeeze it right here and disengage it so there's so many ways to disengage it because it's pronounced so you do have to be careful another bad thing is it can easily pop out and you know like if you're in a truck or something maybe if you're you know it's in your pocket and you bounce a little bit it has a possibility of popping out like i can swing it uh swing it out pretty easily and and swing it all the way open actually i'm under the camera right now but then down like that but just a little bounce does get it to pop out pretty and all it needs to pop out is just that little bit and you can get stuck in the hand so you know with the different hardware and you know the way the backlack set up i mean it can be problematic in some ways let's look at the lock up really quick right here is where 
this will drop down in there. But then there's that play in there. Now, most backlocks have a tiny bit of play. Some more than others. Some of them are really locked up. It just kind of depends. But this is, this is pretty significant, especially when it's doing that and I'm not touching the lock. You know, I don't want this to be an insult in any way, but this thing would have been awesome as a double detent knife. Now, I know my lock is failing, but I'm just, you know, saying it, it would have been awesome as a double detent knife. It works really good. Um, the weight is extremely, extremely light, and see how easily I just failed it right there? Like, I do wonder if it would have just made it better to have full liners. I know it would have been a little heavier, but I don't care. Me personally, I'd rather have strength over how light it is. So, um, but, you know, I just I just think maybe some, some liners, and I don't know if it would be possible to put a stop pin in here that would get rid of that, maybe. Maybe it would be uh, taking uh, a triad locks patent. I don't know. I have no idea. I can't even speak on that. But something would be cool to get maybe a double detent system in there to kind of lock it in. I don't know. Something to stop it from the rock and the fail. Now, I, you know, I, you know, Alien Knives, the, the, the maker of this who you know, does incredible work. He does incredible designs. And, you know, I give him the utmost respect because he's fighting his ass off to start, make, and be a successful knife maker. So I give him nothing but credit and, and my, um, my support, you know, uh, I want to see him do nothing but succeed. And I really hope that the rest of the community does that too because it's not easy i know it's not easy and i've never done it and i know it's not easy to become a su successful knife maker and um this is a hundred dollars it's a hundred dollar handmade knife and, you know and he made his own scales so like he's really trying to be innovative he's you know he's busting his ass trying to do unique things for the knife community and to come up with a handmade knife that you did all by hand that you know for a hundred dollars that that's that's beyond crazy now now yeah there were some issues um but you know the, it is what it is you know it's a handmade knife where you know um it is unique features unique things sometimes there's going to be fails you know there's going to be things that um you can improve you know i don't think any knife maker out here is going to tell you that you know when they come out with a design it's perfect and that they they couldn't improve something on it so um i know a few people bought these a bunch of people bought these um maybe you don't have the issues maybe you do i don't know but you know you gotta you gotta give alien some credit he's busting his ass trying to to do right by the community and trying to bring us some innovative knives and you know i love his uh the dx2 design i love it i think that thing's amazing um so and i would love this thing to only get better through time and yeah i love you guys thank you guys for watching alien man i love you brother and you know you heard what I said. I, I'd love to see this thing just get better and better. And, you know, I love checking out what you have. Um, there will never be a time where I won't check out what you got. Peace.